Let's run through some multiple choice questions here. Beginning off, which of the following procedures should a user auditor include in the audit plan to create the most efficient audit when an audit client uses a service organization for several processes? Now, my go-to is think of ADP for payroll. However, in this case, if they say several processes, they just have multiple third parties for all of these business processes. I'm saying the word processes over and over. It's a good time. All right, so which is going to be most efficient? Let's run through our possible choices. Let's see, review the service auditor's report and outline the accounting system in a memo to the working papers. Let's just reflect this. We've got the user auditor. So we are the user auditor. We are, I'm going to say you, we are auditing Microsoft. Microsoft uses ADP. And the in ADP, let's say they use PwC as their auditor and PwC is going to be the service auditor. That is our, let's envision that as we're going through. Now, are we gonna review PwC's auditor's report and outline the accounting system in a memo to the working papers? I'm not going to say that. I mean, we are gonna review some of the work of the service auditor, so we'll talk about that. But outline the accounting system in a memo to in the working papers, I'm gonna disagree. We've got better answers and we'll kind of talk those through. Review the service auditor's report on controls, place, and operation. I like that. I think you know, we, we will review the service auditor's report. And that's what's the purpose of this? The purpose of this is to understand the service organization as a part of the client's internal controls. As such, reading the service auditor's report on the controls, place, and operation would help us get comfort over ADP's portion of Microsoft. So they do the payroll for Microsoft, it would help us gain comfort for that. Would we audit the service organization's controls? No. So any, we would not, we're not auditing the service organization, we're auditing Microsoft. We're not gonna, now for obviously legal reasons, we wouldn't do it, but also just think about efficiency reasons. Let's say there was no problem with you going in and auditing ADP, just you wouldn't, that would, you know how much time and effort that would take? You're not gonna go and audit ADP just because you're auditing Microsoft. So I would eliminate these two just for that reason alone for sure. Uh, and this is very much the stronger answer, going to be letter B. Now, the user auditor, they should obtain a sufficient understanding of the services provided. This is, this is per the AICPA, right? What are they supposed to do? They have to obtain sufficient understanding of the services provided and their effect on the user entity's internal control relevant to the audit. Now, that sentence is really the key when it comes to understanding what's going on in, in relation to service organizations. The understanding should provide a basis for assessing the risks of material misstatement. If a sufficient understanding cannot be obtained from the user entity, from Microsoft, the user auditor should obtain it from other procedures. So for example, the auditor may obtain and read a type one or type two SOC report, and we can talk about that more and more, but reflected much more in the lesson. So that is the final answer here is gonna be letter B, moving on. Next up, we're gonna see a non-issuer uses a service organizations whose services are part of the non-issuer system of internal control. So the same sort of thing, we're the user auditor. We are now auditing a non-issuer. Non-issuer is going to use ADP for the system of internal control. In the integrated audit, now we're dealing with integrated audits here, how does an auditor evaluate whether the service auditor's report on controls provide sufficient appropriate evidence to support an opinion on internal control over financial reporting? Let's take a look. And which of these is going to be the best answer? Is it going to be by performing a background check of the service auditor? Of the service auditor, say it again, say it's PwC, they're going in here. Well, I'm going to say no. Like, first off, just from you know, experience, there's better answers. And let's say you weren't aware of that. I'd say, okay, put this on the back burner. But you're trying to get comfort over ADP. You're not trying to get comfort over PwC. Now, generally speaking, yeah, I mean, you want to kind of make sure that ADP is being audited by a decent auditor, but that's not gonna be our best answer. Next, by observing the service auditor to determine the level of knowledge about the entity under audit during the first week of audit field work, we're not gonna observe PwC. They probably won't want us to uh, uh, do that anyway. So I'm gonna cross that off. By inquiring of the service auditor's reputation only from the company's outside attorney, that's kind of similar to A and it's just oddly specific and just not what we're gonna do. Lastly, by assessing the results of the test of controls and the service auditor's opinion on the operating effectiveness of the controls. I'm gonna say that is the strongest answer here. We want to assess that result of the test of controls and the opinion overall. 
we are also, in addition, going to make inquiries about their professional reputation, make sure that we're dealing with a reputable auditor here. But that is not the uh, essential portion here. Final answer, letter D. Next up, a client uses a service organization to process its payroll. Which of the following statements is correct regarding the user auditor's use of the service auditor's report on an internal controls placed in operation? So what is correct regarding our use of PwC's report on internal controls? Let's take a look. Well, the client's auditor can use the service auditor's report as evidence for the client's internal controls. So can we use PwC's report on internal controls as a part of ours? Well, I'm thinking, I mean, conceptually, let's just, I mean, yes, there is a rule to this, but conceptually, let's think about it. Since ADP is functioning as a part of our client's internal controls and business process, would it make sense for us to use a report on that in our audit? Now, I would say so, I would say so for sure. I mean, obviously, like there are rules, but um, yes, like that, that is going to be what we're looking at. But let's read on. The client's auditor can use the service auditor's report to jointly determine the materiality level. No, no, we're not, we're not using that report for materiality. We are using that solely for assessment of the client's internal controls. Next up, the client's auditor can use the service auditor's report without inquiring about the service auditor's reputation. As I said, we are going to inquire about the reputation. The two wrong answers about that last time were kind of weirdly specific, and we're not going to do it in that way. We're going to inquire about their reputation, but we're not going to talk to their you know, legal counsel or anything like that. Lastly, the service auditor's report should be referred to in the report of the client's auditor. The client's auditor is the user auditor. That's us. We are not going to do that. We are not able to do that. That is going to be final answer here is letter A. Moving along, having a good time while we are doing it. If an auditor undertakes an engagement to audit a non-issuer's complete financial statements and also to audit a specific element of the financial statements, then the auditor should do what? So we're auditing complete financial statements, but also a specific element of the financial statements. In addition to that, what should we do? Well, first off, just reading, provide agreed upon procedures report, issue one opinion, issue separate reports, or include the opinion on the specific element within the original reports. So first off, let's just kind of think about which of these makes sense and which can we do, which is the easiest. And then within all of that, what is the right answer? What's the uh, correct method per the AICPA? Now, just one note, I'd say each engagement does need to have its own deliverable, such as the report for the overall financial statement and for one specific element. There's many reasons for this, one of which is that each engagement may have a different result. So material, let's say you're auditing the financial statements as a whole, and then a specific element of the financial statements, let's say you're auditing inventory. Now, I'm gonna use an extreme example. Let's say you are auditing Apple, or let's say, let's say Google. Let's say you're auditing Google, because Google does not have a lot of inventory. I mean, maybe they do, but just for the purposes of my example here, they do search engine, they do advertising, YouTube, so they don't really have a lot of inventory. Inventory is immaterial to the financial statements as a whole. And let's say inventory as a whole is very much misstated. It's materially misstated for itself. Let's say, you know, it's a multi-billion dollar company. Inventory is, let's say, $10,000. Let's say inventory is an absolute mess, but this is significantly immaterial to the financial statements as a whole. As such, the financial statements as a whole could give an unmodified opinion. However, if we were auditing just inventory, we would give this a qualified or an adverse opinion. Now, this is just awful. It's an absolute mess. But as such, that's a reason for giving two separate reports, two separate deliverables. So in this case, are we going to include the opinion on the specific element within the report? No. Are we going to provide an agreed upon procedures report? Uh, no. We're, we're doing an audit here. We're not, we're not entering into a new type of engagement. Or like that's just, we wouldn't just automatically enter into a new type of engagement. That's just not appropriate, not allowed. Issue one opinion that covers both. Nope. And I'm going to say final answer is correct. It's going to be letter C. We are going to issue separate reports for both of those items. Nice and simple here. Government accounting standards do what? Do they require a duty to report fraud? Do they require a written report on compliance with applicable laws and regulations? Do they require a written report on internal control or all of the above? And for this, I'm going to reference some items that we saw throughout our, throughout our lessons. Now, this is single audit, but single audit is the most restrictive. It's the most requirements here. But 
you are required for a governmental audit and a single audit to disclose all instances of fraud and illegal acts. However, not necessarily situations which could be indicative of these acts. Taking a look here, right? What were our answers again? No, actually, taking another look. Require a written report on internal control. Require a written report on these items. Yes, we are going to issue reports on these items. Right? We're going to make sure to indicate that they are, are in our final report. And final answer is going to be letter D. Moving along, nice and prompt, super brief. The Single Audit Act of 1984. Does it apply to state funding over $750,000? I'm going to say no, because we've also got federal funding and we're dealing with uh, federal entities here. I'm going to leave that one on the table. Does it require one audit firm to direct the audits of a state or local government agency? No, we're not going to require one audit firm to be in charge of all of that. Lastly, does it require one government audit per year? I'm going to disagree with that as well. Right? If we are going to take a look at our lesson, take a look at what we saw, we are going to see that Single audits are going to deal with in excess of $750,000 in federal financial assistance at the program level per year. Final answer here is going to be $750,000. Coming up, an enterprise engaged a CPA to audit its financial statements in accordance with governmental auditing standards because of the provisions of government grant funding agreements. Under these circumstances, the CPA is required to report on the enterprise's internal controls either in the report on financial statements or what? Well, we're going to have another option here. It, it, is it going to be a separate report? Is it going to be a report on the performance audit? Is it going to be a letter to the government funding agency or in the notes to the financial statement? Now, this report should describe the scope of the auditor's testing of compliance with laws and regulations and internal control over financial reporting and should either be present in the results of those tests or referred to in a separate report containing that information. So that is going to be a separate report. It is not going to be the report on the performance audit. It is not going to be in a letter and it's not going to be in the notes. That is going to be in a separate report. Final answer, letter A. All right. Had a great time going through these questions with you. Keep studying strong. You got this. I believe in you and I'll see you in the next one. Hey there. Are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.